definitely isn't about a world record that I earned that day. It was that I had an opportunity to shine and I, I took it with both hands. If you're promoting gold medals as the only point of success, there's only one winner. What the rest of the other 700, what are they? Are they losers? I'm Richard Whitehead, Paralympic gold medalist, motivational speaker, but more importantly, a good person. So I was born in the late 70s, uh, 1976, in Nottingham, England, in a small village called Loudoun. And I was brought up in a, in a community that wasn't very diverse. And for me, that had lots of challenges and obstacles. People with disabilities have their impairments through different circumstances, and that can be through an accident, uh, whether that's road traffic accident or whether that's in service, um, or through an illness such as cancer. But I was born with my disability. So though some people say I've not had the challenges and obstacles of those, those individuals that have lost their legs due to an accident or illness, but I've had to overcome those stereotypes all through my life and those obstacles and challenges have been present from birth. As all young people grow up in life, they're affected by their surroundings and environment and I was lucky enough that I had lots of friends that accepted me to who I was and maybe there were some adapt adaptations that, that my friends and family made when I was growing up. But I think as you, you, you put yourself into those uncomfortable positions in life, that's when you realise that everybody has their own challenges. When I first learned to swim, when I was four years old, kind of, obviously when I was, when I was growing up, you, you, you've seen my prosthetics that, that, that I wear now and my running blades that obviously I used in the gym earlier and the prosthetics when I was growing up were made of tin and very heavy and cumbersome. To then jump in a swimming pool and just be swimming around like my fellow classmates and friends or going in the gymnasium and, and doing gymnastics was, was really important to me. My parents were definitely key to who I am today and, and the opportunities that, that I've had. Um, I definitely didn't have a good relationship with my first headmaster but he's he set me up for the rest of my life about quite being quite tough being resilient being somebody that's determined to do well I think he he taught me about acceptance and that everybody in life deserves an opportunity and it's about taking that you still need to be the driver in your life and I definitely had to be that in secondary school going on to employment later on in life. Again, when you put yourself into those uncomfortable situations where uh, you're not really sure about what the outcomes look like, but also you kind of challenge yourself in different scenarios around being accepted as a person with a disability. Also, learning new skills and not just challenging other people, but challenging yourself. The American market is very open to uh, people with disabilities and I wanted to go and run a race or do a challenge that started my journey and so in 2004 I went to America and ran the New York City Marathon. I'd never run a 5k, 10k, half marathon. I'd obviously done training but I felt that was a great platform to expose myself to sport at a different level. I'd done that for charity, but also one of my closest friends, Simon Mellows, had just contracted secondary sarcoma at the time. Uh, so to do it, do it for him and to show him that, that anything's possible and, and, and also that I was with him on his journey, even though it was, it, was, it was tough for him having a young family. 
and then unfortunately him dying in 2005. It's, it's about not just doing things for yourself, but um, for people that are less fortunate than ourselves. Um, and that was, that's, and I would still say everything that I've done in my life, one of the biggest achievements that I've ever had. One, taking the risk and opportunity to go to New York and run that race, um, not knowing the consequences of, uh, of running 26 miles, not understanding the effort that it takes to run 26 miles, but also the, the, the responsibility that I had for, for my friend as well. I don't think we, we realised that that today could be our last. And those kind of conversations that you want to have with your parents and your friends, make use of that time because uh, that might be the last time you talk to them. With strength becomes opportunity, but you need to have a strong team around you. And whether that's people, whether that's communication, or whether that's an opportunity. I've been lucky enough to have, have all those. And I know all over the world, there's a lot of people that, that doesn't. Oh, oh, in 2000, so 2012, I won obviously gold in London. Winning for me has always been something kind of a, an out-of-body experience. So seeing that as from a, a different perspective as somebody else, you kind of... I remember like running down the home straight and kind of flying from eight to first and um, you kind of see it as a different... You see it as, some, as you're actually sitting in the crowd and you're watching your performance. Time's flown, it's, let's say, nearly 10 years since I won in London and it just feels like yesterday. But winning for me has always been about kind of sharing that with people and, and, and hopefully people, it makes people smile by not just watching me race, but also kind of enjoying that success as well. Success needs to be personal. It needs to be about every person having their own success. And if my only success was my gold medals, I feel that I'd have wasted my career. The gold medals that I have, I actively share them with my community and little chunks of those are the, the team around me that have provided me with their time and their effort into that, that performance. And, and it is, that's what, that, what, that's what I have. I have lots of different performances and memories that, that create those opportunities. I've been lucky enough that I'm very good at what I do and then you see my success. But I always celebrate the, the athletes that have run with me as well as those other stories that you hear within sport. Don't be defined by a gold medal. Don't be, be defined by a medal. Uh, be defined by who you are and what you could become. Just because you've been successful doesn't mean you're a good person. Just because you're a gold medalist doesn't mean you're somebody that you should aspire to be. And role models do let you down. It's about having the skills, having the tools to be a better person and figuring out who you want to be in life and what kind of impact you have. And it definitely, is, it definitely starts with looking at yourself, your, your family, your community and having a local impact. And then spreading those messages to a wider audience to affect um, the community, whatever country you're in, and then relate to different audiences and and then not be defined by the stereotypes that people give you. I would say the cliche would be that I, I've got this like kind of sieve that I use and then all skills that other people have that I find like really inspiring, like commitment, determination, resilience, empowerment. They're, they're skills that I throw into this sieve, I shake the sieve and the ones that stick to the side I kind of then pick them out and then try and be more resilient myself and try and empower more people. But I really think that you need to have your own core values and kind of figure out who you are and be actively communicating that with your audience. And not just, just talking about it, but also doing it as well.
I think it's, it's important that you still have goals and you still have aspirations and you still want to be better. Um, I still see there's a lot of young people out there that need support and need guidance because the world is a different place than when I was growing up and the technology is out there to support young people but I think it's not used in the right way at the moment. Motivation for me is, is, is to connect with as many of those young people as possible and give them the opportunity to have their own platform in life. Impact is, is measured in lots of different ways, isn't it? And we, we talk openly about the power of your influence and, and being an influencer and what that looks like. An influencer 30 years ago was, was your parents or was your friends or was people close by you. Now an influencer, somebody that you maybe never meet. If, if other people see me as a person that can influence uh, people in the disability community or in that diversity community, then I want to make that positive impact through the positive messaging, empowering and liberating other people to take on their own journey and also the memories they make for themselves and their families to be better. Better people make better athletes, better people um, have positive impacts on their communities. Lots of people have asked me about my legacy and how I want to be remembered. I don't want to be remembered as a gold medalist or somebody that's got a gold letterbox or a doctorate from Nottingham University or all these kind of lifetime achievement awards I've got. Hopefully people see that I'm personable and that I give my time to, to other people. And if I'm able to affect one person in that positive way, then I feel I've done my job and everybody's going to have some kind of obstacles in their life that stops them from doing something. And it's about how you challenge those, those disabilities that we all have and, and make them into a positive. Everybody's given a card in life and it's about how you utilise that card. Um, Disability for me has took various, various turns because I, th I would say in, in, in younger life I was obviously really supported and empowered by my parents and then as I was in my teens it was quite tough, didn't really have a, a kind of a platform or didn't really understand what my purpose was and then through what I've done in the last 10-20 years I've really found that that support, sport's given me an opportunity to support, talk about things more than sport and, um, and, and hopefully people relate to me as a person, not as a person with a disability. Richard Whitehead, what an inspiration. He only lives a few minutes down the road from the Mulligan Brothers studio in Nottingham, and he's such an inspiration. We see him quite often doing his training, and it was so great that we could collaborate on this piece. Um, I wanna say all his stuff is linked down below. There are some future projects we're thinking about working on with Richard, so keep an eye on him, keep following him. Go follow me on Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brothers, to see what we get up to. And also today's video was sponsored and made possible by MulliganBrothers.com, where you can now buy the Not A Journal, um, a journal for just getting stuff done, and also the Inspire Change t-shirt. All the links are in the description. Um, thank you for the support, guys. Have a blessed and productive day. Go share this with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.